the bloodthirsty Sorellian warrior Granola, the survivor of a race destroyed by the Saiyans in Frieza who seeks revenge in the current time and wants to become the strongest in the universe by any means necessary. And he certainly does accomplish that during the Granola arc in Dragon Ball Super. Today, we're going to discuss the incredible power and feats of Granola on this edition of The Strongest in Dragon Ball, the series where I look at the most amazing over-the-top feats of some of your favorite Dragon Ball characters. Check out the playlist on Geekdom 101. I've covered a lot of the heavy hitters. And up next is Granola. Let's talk about it. Hey folks, if you like what I'm putting out here on Geekdom 101 and want to hear my thoughts on other aspects of geek culture like video games, TV shows, movies, pro wrestling, and more, check out my second channel, World of Geekdom. I will leave a link down below for you to check that out. I thank you and I hope you enjoy it. Granola did it his way, and his way was to cheat. Basically, Granola became the strongest in the universe in the Granola arc, not from having some kind of secret potential locked inside of him that he had to discover, not by intense training year after year after year like a lot of our main characters did. No, Granola found the Sorellian Dragon Balls in a very convoluted way. Let's not forget, I still hate that chapter. And was able to wish himself to be the strongest in the universe. So Granola became the strongest through the dragon of the Cerulean Balls. However, it came at a cost. Granola was so bloodthirsty for revenge that this cost did not really affect him. The cost was that by Granola becoming the strongest in the universe, the strongest mortal that is, does not include gods, he leapfrogged everyone in the Dragon Ball story up until this point. But we should take note that Tarambo, the Sorellian dragon, did tell Granola that to make him stronger, it can be done, but he cannot be stronger than his latent potential will allow. So basically, Granola took a shortcut, took a warp whistle, because had Granola trained and done it the right way, or had the anger boost that Gohan has, he wouldn't have had to have made this wish, but this wish let him skip all of that, but it came at a cost. Granola shortened his lifespan as a result of the wish from 150 years to only having three left. So in three years, Granola is supposed to die. Now, Tarambo does explain that the way he's going to do this is by multiplying Granola's current strength by condensing all the power that he would have had throughout the entirety of his lifetime. Granola was willing to trade living a long life just to get revenge on Frieza and the Saiyans. Would you have done that? Leave a comment down below right now before you even keep going and let me know if you would have made that trade. And remember to leave a like on the video now. As a result of Granola making that wish, he had some strange side effects. For example, his hair grew long, almost like a Super Saiyan 3. This is because his time track has been shut down from 150 years down to 3. So it's almost like he never got a haircut. But he does get a haircut right after this. At that point, Granola tries to find Frieza to begin his revenge, but Frieza was nowhere to be found. We would not discover this until the very end of the arc, but we know where Frieza was. He was training in an alternate dimension that resembled the Room of Spirit and Time, so he was able to access the time chamber from a different gateway point inside of that dimension, the dimension of no time, and was able to train for 10 years to become Black Frieza. Black Frieza is significantly stronger than even Granola. But the reason as to why Granola did not get wished to be stronger than him is because Black Frieza was already training in the other dimension and thus that dimension is not part of Universe 7 and because of that the wish only affected the mortal realm from Universe 7. Had Granola made the wish when Frieza was not in the chamber, he would have probably been stronger than Black Frieza, but maybe his life would be shorter than three years, maybe it would be one year or maybe a few months we may never know the Sorellian dragon tarambo is a big mystery when it comes to granting wishes because he's the first dragon in the history of dragon ball including gt that grants wishes at a cost to you usually dragons just grant the wish and sometimes they say they can't grant the wish 
because if the person who the wish is being made upon is stronger than the creator of the Dragon Balls, then the wish might not work. But again, this Tarumbo Dragon has a lot of unanswered questions that we may never get answered. So there's a mini fight between Granola and Gas, and I may do a Strongest in Dragon Ball on Gas in the future. I'm not really sure when, but they have a little miniature rematch here, and this time Granola wins, now fully accepting that the wish was granted properly, and that he was way stronger than not only he's ever been, but that he ever thought he would become. But Granola is a quick learner, and while he may not have been able to truly master his new body right away, he definitely did it quicker than many expected, especially with that huge leap in power. And don't forget that at this point, he still has not used his full power. We don't really see Granola get tested until his battle with Goku and Vegeta. Now keep in mind that at this point, Goku has learned how to tap into Ultra Instinct, not only at will, but he can also use the Ultra Instinct speed tactics Tapping into Ultra Instinct while still using Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue forms. We see this during the fight with Granola. Over on the Vegeta side of things, he was training with Beerus and thus he learned a new transformation, a new form of power called Ultra Ego. I've already done a video here on the channel explaining the Ultra Ego transformation, so check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Granola demonstrates an unbelievable fighting acumen during his fight with Goku and Vegeta. It turns out that the wish that was made to the dragons not only made Granola stronger, but also gave him a brand new arsenal of moves, including cloning himself, which he does during these fights to fool with Goku and Vegeta, becoming a form of magic using what resembles Hakai, but it's more so like a mortal version called Entropy, or at least that's the name that we're giving it. And he also is able to have better senses, and as a result of that and his Cerulean blood, is able to utilize sniper-like pinpoint key blasts that are meant to take out pressure points and hurt you in a specific point on your body. He does this numerous times and is able to knock Goku out using one of these techniques. With his right eye evolved, his accuracy triples. And he also has the ability to spot his opponent's weak points. This is something that makes him a tactfully dangerous fighter along the likes of Hit, except even stronger. Hit could do things like this, but Goku was able to surpass him easily. Granola, different story. And let's not forget that Granola's fighting Goku who is tapping into Ultra Instinct levels of speed and Granola's able to keep up, this wish was more effective than anyone imagined. But trust me, there's more. Remember what happened during the fight with Ultra Ego Vegeta and Granola? Firstly, Granola was able to evolve his right eye. And even though some have called it a transformation, I'm not really sure I want to call it that at this time because all he really did was unlock more of his power. So he's able to do that with Vegeta. But then during that fight, Ultra Ego Vegeta does have the advantage for some of it because of his incredible tenacity and the fact that the Ultra Ego form can absorb hits and turn it into power. Although some have debated that maybe that's a combination of Ultra Ego and the Force Spirit Fission techniques that Vegeta learned from the Yard Rats. But I can't confirm or deny that. However, I did do a video discussing that. So check that video out as well to learn everything about Force Spirit Fission. Now, the most impressive thing he did during the fight was when Ultra Ego Vegeta did his version of a God of Destruction Hakai Big Bang Attack, maybe? Remember he made that giant ball that was made up purely of Hakai Energy? Now, keep in mind that Hakai Energy, if you touch it, if it's at max power, you die. You get turned into dust. And Beerus did state in Dragon Ball Super that he has the ability to wipe you away so you don't even become a ghost. Literally end your existence. Now, I'm not sure if Vegeta learned how to do that part of Hakai yet, but what happened was he created this ball of Hakai and Granola was able to blast a hole through the ball with his own energy. That's how strong this guy is. He's able to even manipulate God techniques to a degree. 
After the fight between Granola and the Saiyans, we then discover that Elec was able to gather the balls again, and this time wish for Gas to become the strongest, so Gas enters the battlefield now, becoming the true strongest over Granola. Toyotaro himself in an interview said that during this arc at this point, the order of strongest mortals in the universe are 1 Granola, and then slots 2 and 3 go to Goku and Vegeta, but he did not explain where each one goes. Well, now that Gas was granted his wish, he is now number one, and Granola's number two. Vegeta was quick to note, however, that Granola was way better at using his enhanced body with the Dragon Balls than Gas was. So there's definitely a time where you have to get accustomed to your new power. And Granola was in his body being the strongest in the universe longer than Gas was, but as the fight progressed, Gas did get better and better, but also his life was draining, much like how Granola's was, but at a faster rate because Gas was tapping into this power and elevating it more and more during his battles with Goku and the others. Granola still plays a part though in the finale of the fight because he and Goku together work to blast Gas and almost finish him off. They got the best move they could have when Goku left his body and created that new giant Ultra Instinct hologram and at that point he was launched up while granola fired a blast at pinpoint accuracy and hits gas to defeat him until he powers up again and ultimately he was killed by black frieza and so granola's time in the manga may have come and gone and i'm not sure if we'll ever see him again but prior to the gas wish and the black frieza reveal he was the strongest in the universe especially when he was able to evolve both of his eyes and tap into the full power to defeat goku and vegeta neither of these two really got a win in this arc and i find that to be fascinating compared to other arcs and with that this video ends take care of yourself and each other 